Hey guys, I've been back from the uh, early television convention for about 48 hours now and uh, I'm still pretty achy. <laughs> Most of it actually not from carrying sets, uh, just from being on my feet for so many hours, a couple days in a row. Just uh, not used to that, my main job being sitting in front of a computer <laughs> programming. Uh, anyways, had a great time. Uh, I met uh, a number of viewers I hadn't met before, which was a lot of fun. Uh, the auction uh, had more items than uh, I expected. And, um, yeah, I would have liked to have had a truck and <laughs> taken a couple dozen home with me. But, uh, as you have uh, seen, if you've been watching my photos in my community tab, it's getting a little tight down here. I think there are currently uh, about 14 predictors I have queued up to fix, something like that. So in that photo I showed a whole bunch of predictors I'll include in this video too. Uh, I don't think any of these are mine, maybe one. Maybe one of them uh, way off in the distance is mine, the rest are not. Um, now the clock is ticking because a lot of these belong to a uh, collector on the East Coast. Those are the ones that were delivered last fall, and those have to get out of here by mid-September because Vintage Computer Fest Midwest is happening again uh, mid-September, and that's when my uh, old buddy uh, from high school comes from the East Coast, and we'll be picking them up and taking them back. And guess what? He's bringing me another trailer load of vintage TVs from the same collector to fix. It's the remainder of his collection. No predictors. Uh, it's going to be really interesting. Uh, a gamut of sets ranging from about 47 to 77. Yeah, we're actually going to do some relatively modern stuff in the mix. It's a, a real uh, mishmash of sets, most of which I've never worked on before. So that'll be real interesting. That'll be in the fall. Meanwhile, <laughs> I have to get all of his sets done and a few others. Luckily, I have four predictors that are about 95% done. I have a huge backlog of footage to get to you guys and have started working on a new set or two. Sadly, I won't be able to work on any of my sets so much for a while. But there's one good thing, and that batch of sets coming in the fall is going to be another Emerson, uh, identical to the one that I showed you uh, a few weeks back that was kind of butchered where all the caps had been replaced with terminal strips, the sound IF coil was ripped out and replaced with some bizarre solid state replacement. I believe his is minty. He even has the original stand for his. So, I figured even though I ordered parts for mine and I got some good reference photos, I think in the interests of saving myself some brain cells, as much as I want to dive into it, I think I should wait until his arrives in the fall. So I can have them so, both side by side, so I'll try to restrain myself. I do have the new Magnavox if I want to play around with something. And yeah, the Protogram Duo View is there. There was one at the auction. I did bid on it. Somebody else bid on it. If I could have gotten it for 5 or 10 or 20 bucks, I would have done it. But I figured I've got one. Um, I like a challenge. Uh, some of you, at least one of you said, like, I don't think you're ever going to get it to work. I accept that challenge. I'm going to stick with trying to fix the one I have. It just might take me a little while to get back to it. None of what I just said has anything to do with what this video is about. What this video is about is the contents of this box. So... My trusty old camera um, is on the fritz. I bought a new <laughs> camera that's about as old, maybe slightly older than this one. That's what I'm recording on right now. Well, a viewer contacted me and said, uh, Hey, I hear you're looking for a camera. Maybe I can help you out. What would you like? So I said, Wow, well, money's no object. Here's one I saw online that, uh, sure, uh, if, if uh, money was no object, I would love to have it. 
And he said, well, send me a link. Let's see what I can do. And what he did was, he bought it for me. So, I am deeply uh, indebted. Well, I'm not indebted, but I, I uh, have a lot of gratitude for him. I figure, uh, well, he said he was a long-time viewer. And I think this is his way of showing his thanks. Which is very much appreciated. So, uh, he ordered it off his Amazon and then shipped it to me. Now, yes, I have the camera that I just bought that uh, I also have. And I still have my old, old camera, which works just a viewfinder shot, and it, the battery doesn't have much life. However, I have plans. I have plans that uh, multiple cameras will be great for it. So here's what I plan on doing. I experimented a while back with doing a split uh, camera video. And it turned out pretty well, uh, pretty nicely. But the secondary camera I used for that was one of my really old cameras, which is a pain to deal with. Now that I have three cameras, all of which are Canons, uh, similar form factor and... Uh, at least two of them I'm very familiar with. Um, I'm going to set up multiple angles, multiple shots. And uh, the one I'm on right now has a remote control for zoom. Because so what I want to do is do my best to do a series on TV alignment. Something I've been asked about many times over the years. I've done some quick attempts to show you how to do TV alignments, and I've always thrown out. Um, it's very specific to every TV and the test equipment you have, and I just kind of rushed my way through it because I figured it wouldn't be of much value to show you exactly what I was connecting where unless you had exactly the same equipment and chassis as I have. Well, I can do better than that. I can, I, I can explain the concepts. I can explain the theory of what I'm doing, what I'm trying to achieve. And the reason I want to do it is there are a lot of radio alignment videos, Mr. Carlson um, and others, um, and they've done a great job. And I don't want to rehash it again. Uh, it, but there are, there's not a whole lot of, uh, if there are any really in-depth videos on TV alignment. Yes, there are others, Shango and, and so on. I've certainly demonstrated, for example, using a B&K 415. That's how I found out about a B&K 415, and now I have one. Um, but that was on, a, he used it on a newer set, um, and, uh, what I want to do is kind of go back to basics, get out a whiteboard, and talk, um, initially about, um, the, why TV alignment is different than radio alignment, and what, what are you actually trying to achieve, what are you trying to do, and then explain some of the different circuit types to achieve that goal of uh, a certain kind of bandwidth and, and response curves and such and then show you how you can use equipment to tune up your set. So I figured hey the more cameras the better because it's tough when, because you need to sh when I'm digging down in here with a little twiddle stick on a coil and the camera's five feet away you can't see what the heck I'm doing so I want to get a camera in tight with some good light, but then also have a camera further away so you can see. Because sometimes you want to see what's on the screen or on the scope, but you also want to see where the, you're twiddling the control. So anyways, <laughs> I'll stop uh, babbling and show you what he got for me. It is a Vixia HF G70. It is their latest and greatest camcorder. I know some of you suggested GoPros and, and other types, and I know that now there's been kind of a blurring line of um, using cameras that are, can do both still and video. And of course you can use phone, your phone to do it as well. I'm used to using camcorders. They have some things I like. I like having an opt optical zoom. I like having a form factor where I can hold it in my hand when needed. I like uh, my tripods all are set up for this type of uh, shoe, I guess they call it. So, 
this is a 4K camera. And I know the general opinion is, hey, we don't really need 4K. Heck, my old videos were in 720p, maybe even less than that originally. And going to 1080 was a huge quantum leap. But I've never recorded in 4K. Um, I know the video files are going to be huge. It might take a while to process. And yeah, when you upload to um, YouTube, uh, they limit your bitstream. In fact, I, I noticed that last time I uploaded a video. Uh, my old camera, I could record at 24 megabits per second, but YouTube converts it to 8. So, you know, you, you, you're not getting the full... Um, clarity, quality of the original video. But we'll play around with it. There's other features this has that just beyond the raw bandwidth and megabits per second that make this a really sweet camera. Ooh, got some heft to it. So it's 15 years newer or so than the camera I'm recording on right now. So you can imagine there have been some advancements. More memory, longer battery life, higher resolution, uh, it's got a much better eyepiece. It's going to have better light sensitivity. So that, that that's impressive. <laughs> uh, wow, it's got a much larger... It's, the lens on this is probably the diameter of it. It's pro Well, you know. <laughs> Here's my old, old camera. Let's see, lens is slightly bigger. <laughs> Here's the new one. Here's the old one. I also got comments about light. I have a blinding light shining in my face right now. The thing is with these cameras, I generally just put them in auto mode. They automatically adjust the exposure for the light. So if I put more and more lights on, it's going to compensate by going the other way. Um, it's, it's very bright down here right now. What I could do is go into manual mode and adjust the brightness. I, I want to spend most of my time on doing my thing. Been playing around with the cameras. I've never really bothered to read the user's manual on any of these. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm not, I should. I should take the time. Boy, this this is a. Uh, it's got. It's beefier overall. It's probably weighs twice as much, and it's twice the size. The length is a little bit longer. But uh, a lot of it is. I mean, that, that is a beautiful lens. Twenty times optical zoom. So I'm really curious to see what this could do. It feels nice too. It has a real nice coating on it. You can do uh, dual memory cards. So I could record tons of stuff. Oh, interesting. It has, it has a manual uh, focus on it. I haven't seen that before. So I'm going to have to read up a little bit. But I will conclude this video by including some footage from this. Oh yeah, one... <laughs> One nice thing, my other two cameras take a, they come with a Canon um, charger, yeah, it's on there somewhere, with a specialized connector on the end of it. Ah, I'm not going to take it out. This is USB-C, so I can just use the standard charger that a phone uses. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Ooh. Oh, I like the zoom. There's a nice big big old rocker switch on the side for the zoom in and out. Oh yeah, boy, I hadn't even realized that. That's neat. So I'm, I'm used to using the, uh, the flip-out thing um, for a viewfinder. In fact, I think one or both of these won't even record unless this is open. But this also has a real eyepiece viewfinder on it. Uh, I guess the battery is installed right now. So let me uh, hook this up, power this up, and see if I can uh, get it to do its thing. And uh, hopefully you'll see a jump in, uh, in video quality. Hang on. Here's a look at the camera as it sits on a tripod. Uh, came with this optional shroud, which I've now installed. You can uh, close it to protect the camera and open it. I guess it pr protects it from incidental light. Maybe reduces glare. I'm not sure. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a nice thing to use. Uh, there's a shoe up top. I believe you can uh, put a, an external microphone if I wanted to up there. I guess these are the two built-in microphones up top. Let me get a little more. 
right over. I'm not entirely sure how I should be starting and stopping recording properly and such. So I noticed if I just turn it on, so we have a slide switch, media off camera, if I just hit the record button on the back, it remembers where I left off and it keeps advancing the time index. So I just wonder if I'm gonna get am I gonna get one gigantic file or multiple files. Oh, pull. I'm not sure what that eh. interesting. So when I was playing around with this camera, I was just using this for the viewfinder. I haven't actually seen anything through that yet. Yeah, I'll have to see how that goes. Because right now we're just seeing through here and not through that. Obviously I have my homework to do. But it is a gorgeous camera. Huh, that's interesting. So here's the new camera again, pointed at me. Um, it's at exactly the same location as the previous camera, but you can see more stuff. That's cool because previously I'd have my camera sometimes 10 feet back to from my workbench, uh, which was kind of annoying at times, but now it's only about four feet away. Uh, and yeah, you can see a whole lot more. And just for me looking at the viewfinder, uh, LCD screen, um, it looks fantastic. Uh, so, <laughs> I'd be very curious to hear your thoughts on this and I'm going to post this video in um, a couple chunks because the first portion was filmed with an old camera in 1080 this portion is being filmed in 4k when I combine the two I may be forced to do the whole thing in 1080 um, but I want to do a separate portion just in 4k just just to see just to see uh, it's funny, I put my old memory card in the camera first and it rejected it for insufficient write speed. Now that was an old 8 gig uh, memory card. I just happened to have a 256 gig new memory card. I popped it in. It's working just fine. Um, so, <laughs> welcome to a, a new era of ultra high def. Uh, maybe. Now I'll see how it goes. Uh, don't be surprised if I lower the settings a bit. So right now, I used to get out of the box, turn it on, and hit record. Um, it may have higher settings. For sure, it has lower. I may end up going to force to get down to 1080p for extending the battery life, uh, for getting uh, putting more on the memory card, in other words, having a longer record length, and um, just so my laptop can handle it. Um, I have a fairly new laptop. I think it has a one terabyte solid state drive and so on. Um, but even so, you get into 4K high bitrate territory, these files got to be big. Uh, and I um, imagine it's going to be a little painful to edit them. Uploading, no problem. I got fiber, <laughs> symmetrical fiber. So uh, uploading should be just fine. <laughs> but editing and encoding, maybe not so much. Now, another reason it's great to have these old cameras is if I go out on some grungy expedition to pick something up or I'm out in the garage working on something, I'm not going to bring this camera with me. I'm going to bring one of the old cameras with me. So uh, this is just fantastic. And thanks so much again to uh, my benefactor for providing this camera. Uh, so I guess you could call this a, a, a state of the basement vlog, uh, an introduction to a new camera. Thanks for watching, and please let me know what you think about the quality of this. And I'll just I'll just do this last segment in a separate video as well, and uh, let's see how it turns out.